Good morning, everyone. I'll introduce myself first. I'm Wing Ngoc Yuan, currently in eighth grade at Le Huy Dome Secondary School, and I'm very honored to be here today to deliver a presentation for you all. Before we start, I want you to all think about the United States. Can such a highly developed country like that have something such as child labor? Well, surprisingly, it did exactly a century ago, and that brings us to our topic for today, which is child labor. And the other perspective, you might not analyze methodically. So, what exactly is child labor? It's defined as work that deprives children of their education, childhood, and can cause harm to their mental as well as physical health. Back to the fact about the United States. Why did I mention that fact, and was it significant? Well, we'll discuss about that in the overview section. Approximately, child labor started happening in the United States between the 17 and 1800s time period, but started occurring in the entire world in the 1930s. I want you to have a good look at these two pie charts. As you can see from the bold words, they illustrate the percent distribution of working children from 5 to 17 years old by broad industry groups. Clearly, we can see that there are three broad industry groups, with our, which are agriculture, services, and industry, illustrated by three different colors. From these two pie charts, we can conclude that throughout these two timelines, there isn't much of a significant difference due to the lack of change in the percentages. Well, some of them decreased and increased, but only slightly, which is not worth mentioning. Next, I have this line graph illustrating child labor in the United States from 1890 to 1930. We can see that the percentages for boys, girls, and both sexes participating in child labor from, from 1890 slowly decreased in 1930. And this is due to the economy growth in the United States, with, which limited child labor at all costs. The second part is the cause. Now, history books have taught us that the people in fault are the factories and companies for allowing children under age to work in child labor. And that's not wrong because they do contribute to this issue. But you need to think about the regulations. So in order for these companies to be legally permitted to operate, they need to be granted certifications such as RAP, ISO, and Better Work. These, certificate, these certifications are not ordinary, but they're only distributed to companies that follow guidelines and principles, such as no child labor. What can we conclude from this? We can clearly see that the Management of Act has already limited child labor with these rules. Now, let's think about the children. We can conclude that the issues of child labor comes from the laborers themselves. Because in a timeline where poverty was a really significant issue, you need to help out your parents by participating in jobs to earn money. Last but not least are the short and long-term solutions I want to put out. First is to implement the universalization of education. Now, you all know that education is a fundamental right for every child, but not every child gets to receive this education due to the areas they live in. For example, in mountainous areas, there is a shortage of schools being established there due to the rocky roads, and this is a big drawback for children. How can we reduce this? Governments can help by establishing schools with lower school fees or even reduce the school fees in schools right now. An example in Vietnam is when seven provinces and cities announced redemptions and reductions in their school fees for every child. Second is the most effective solution, which is economic growth. This is a very interesting one because although it's the most effective, it's quite hard to achieve in most nations. If you look at this board right here, one of the main benefits of economic growth is higher incomes, reduced poverty, and better education for children. And these are the main factors that can limit child labor at all costs. 
So in the United States, when the economy has grown, we all know now that it is a very developed country, and that's why child labor is limited there. But in Vietnam, child labor is still happening right now, which proves that the economy hasn't yet grown. Last is giving scholarships for the underprivileged. Giving or even hosting competitions for these. Scholarships is a great way for children to receive the education they deserve. Now, in the ceremony I show right here, it was a ceremony in Thừa Thiên Huế. As a collaboration with a charity company, they awarded a hundred scholarships to every child under every circumstances, such as being an orphan or being disabled. And the most important part is having a needy family. In honor of the sacrifice from all these children, I do not want to let their hard work go unnoticed. So I want you all to remember that these are children who are supposed to go outside and play, but instead they have to think about earning income for their family in order to put food on the table. So I want you to all be grateful for what you currently have and cherish every moment with your family members. And thank you for listening to my presentation. Dạ một trò rất là đặc lớn dành cho thí sinh Nguyễn Ngọc Doanh.